On Friday the 12th of January, a tweet was shared which said the final rails and sleepers had been installed on the section of East West Rail between Bletchley and Bicester. But whilst it seems as if track laying is now done, there is still a lot that needs to be done before the track installation is considered to be fully complete. Rather frustratingly, I was in the area a day before for an HS2 site visit. It would have been great to get some footage of the final sections of sleepers and rails being laid. Once track laying is complete, there will still be much to do before the line can open. Railway systems such as power and signalling will have to be installed before a testing and commissioning phase can take place. To operate the service, I've been told that Class 196 diesel multiple units will be subleased from West Midlands Trains to Chiltern Railway, who operate the service between Oxford and Milton Keynes. Once the driving and commissioning phase is complete, drivers from Chiltern will have to be trained to drive the new trains on a completely new route, with driver training expected to take place towards the end of this year. So whilst the opening may seem tantalisingly close, there is still a lot that has to be done before the first passenger trains start running. Another milestone that was reached this week was the reopening of Addison Road. The new road over rail bridge was supposed to reopen last year, but Utility Works hampered delivery of the new bridge, which is being delivered by the EKFB joint venture, who is delivering this section of EWR on behalf of HS2 Limited. I'm sure local residents were relieved when Addison Road reopened, as HS2 have now closed School Hill in order to rebuild the bridge that crosses the Great Central Alignment. Road surfacing was taking place along Addison Road at the time of my visit, so I couldn't get close enough to capture any new footage unfortunately. Once Addison Road and the new HS2 EWR crossing are complete, the site will be handed to East West Rail so their contractors can complete the installation of railway systems. Although I wasn't able to capture much footage of the route due to poor light conditions, I did manage to visit Wilnslow Station for the first time. This is the only new station being constructed between the two towns, not counting the new high level platforms at Bletchley. Being the only new station between Bicester and Bletchley means it will have to serve the surrounding area, so it could turn into somewhat of a park and ride station. The station building itself looks uninspiring and the stairs and lifts look like a generic modern off the shelf network rail structure. As far as I can tell, the platforms look long enough for four car trains, but it does at least look as if platforms could potentially be lengthened in future. What will be the car park still looks like a building site, but once work on the station is complete, it shouldn't take long to complete it. I must say that the car park does look a little bit small, and whilst I appreciate people should be encouraged to use public transport or active travel to get to the station, it's clear that people from the surrounding area will undoubtedly want to drive there. The station design and platform lengths seemingly shows that the new railway has been built to a cost in order to ensure delivery, rather than building for the future. This is very apparent with the existing structures that have been retained, which will have to be adjusted in future if the line is ever electrified. It does at least seem that the new structures have been designed with passive provision for electrification, but adding wires later will undoubtedly cost more than it would have had the line been electrified from the outset. That said, ensuring delivery was key, and I'm in no doubt the line will be popular once it opens. It may be the case that four car diesel trains will not be sufficient, and hopefully demand will lead to future improvements. The next year will be key for the route between Bicester and Bletchley, with plenty still to do, but it's looking likely that the line will open on schedule early next year. Whilst I have you, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon and YouTube supporters who helped make videos like this possible. If you'd like to consider supporting the channel, there'll be links in the description below.